Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're going to be checking out the Fruity Wave Shaper as a way to add some extra groove to your possibly already groovy bass. Let's start off with an audio example. So here's the bass we're going to be using. It's got the Wave Shaper already on it. Let's just give it a listen. <laughs> So away we go, you know, tons of good stuff. So we're going to be looking at this. Let's go ahead. Let's focus in on the bass line. This is the specific sound. And let's remove the wave shaper. So the basic idea, if I had to summarize this real quick for those of you that are a little more advanced, grab a distortion, throw something aggressive on it and automate it on and off like a vibrato, like you would add vibrato to a solo if you're an instrumentalist. So like, let's say you're playing clarinet. And you have vibrato in a couple spots. So you don't have it everywhere, just in those few spots to make the performance more musical. That's the whole notion of what we're going to be doing here with the distortion is we're going to speak a little more musically in our production by adding in effects that are only coming on at spots that, you know, they kind of fit. It makes sense to put them there. It's a type of articulation, a way of pronouncing certain notes. So here I'm going for some bass house production. So I'm looking for that groove, right? So let me go ahead and remove this. So this is what it sounds like already. Already a lot of groove. There's volume and filters and there's distortions and effects everywhere. Uh, but let's just say you've already got a root sound and this is what we're working with. <laughs> So things are opening up slowly over time, which is what gives us that growth. Uh, but right here, you notice it was less groovy. There was, there was more, you know, static stuff in the middle. So let's go ahead. And what I've got here is a distortion with a pretty aggressive shape. And the shape itself, I'm using a wave shaper. And I encourage you to mess around with the Fruity Wave Shaper in particular because you can create all kinds of shapes. I've got one earlier in the chain that's just really aggressively brightening up the sound and distorting it. And uh, they, they just give you options. You can turn things on slowly over time to alter the sound as you go. Keeps a single, if, you're, if you're only using one sound, keeps it interesting as you move along. But this Wave Shaper down here is more of an expression distortion, an expressive uh, move. Uh, because what we're going to do is we've got a pretty crazy shape here. And anytime you go up and down really fast and your sound is pretty loud, which mine is extremely loud. You saw it was just flying up to the top here. Uh, this is going to create a super, super crazy distortion. Typically, you don't always want this on because it's overbearing. But since I'm only moving it on and off very slowly or for specific moments, not as overbearing. So we're going to add this in. Sounds like this with it. <laughs> Without it, with it, so in this case, we get like a boom, boom, uh, you know, a double whammy, but they're being done via different effects, so it's really an expressive, just an expressive thing. So let's go ahead and dive into the automation itself. So that's really, that's really just the gist of it. I throw a distortion on there. I create, in the case of a wave shaper, you can control the shape. Give it a pretty crazy shape, you know, get wild with it. And then automate the mix control on. Now, how you automate it on with the line you're using is going to matter a lot. Context really matters with this sort of a thing. So uh, what I have here is I already have a groovy bass line. And what I'm doing is I'm using it to emphasize a sort of a weak beat here. So we've got here, here's the automation. And throughout time, it changes. So over here, we're much more open. You can see it's almost like a really just some crazy noise coming in almost. So I'm using it here to emphasize groove. I found a spot in the rhythm that it kind of works. I have two big, you know, wow, wow. And then I have sort of a response. It's almost like a call and response built into the same line itself. It's kind of weird. It's almost like there's a counter, a counter melody in it. Uh -huh. 
and then I have these extra little riffs here at the end where the sounds like almost come up and then clamp off and these uh, I have slightly different shapes at one point for them uh, to really bring out this moment. <laughs> So right here, this is another great example of using the same effect. So same effect, but in this case, it's being used as a transitional element. So kind of more like a vibrato. So that wow right there. That kind of stuff. So. Uh, really simple idea, really pretty straightforward, but I think having a really clear example, a case where I'm using it, but it's not a super big feature, it's just that one little melodic element that I'm tossing in there, but it's one way to take a sound you already have and make it go an extra bit further. And a lot of times this is better than adding a new sound because then you got to go hunt for a sound and you got to fit it in. You got to make sure it fits the style and the track and all this other stuff where if, you, if you've already got a sound, it's worth experimenting with maybe some distortion effects and bringing those in occasionally as a kind of expressive tool to maximize what you already have. This also affords you oftentimes more room in a mix because now it's all one, it's on, more is on one sound. So you can, you know, you can set that sound where it is and you don't have to fight with a new sound competing for space in your mix. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.